What's going on, everybody? And welcome to Ask a CISP podcast. My name is Ryan Williams, and I am a CISP, and I like to answer the questions of those uh, breaking into cybersecurity or switching career fields and things of that nature. Uh, this podcast mirrors well with our Ask, or I'm sorry, the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, where we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color made to the other side of the broken firewall. So we're getting both ends of the spectrum. My special co-host for this episode is Alex Worsham. Uh, how are you doing, sir? I'm pretty good this morning. All right, that's what's up. So um, you reached out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, you agreed to be on the podcast, which I great, greatly appreciate. You have some really good questions, which I, I think will help other people. Um, so you can give me a little bit about yourself. So um, how did you get into IT or cyber and uh, kind of what are, what are your goals for the future? Uh, <clears throat> as far as getting into IT is concerned, uh, both my parents have been um, really deep in the IT field. So I was kind of, you know, pushed into it. Uh, uh, definitely not forced. I love computers. I've always loved computers. Um, back in like 2013, I built my first gaming computer and it scored a okay. just skyrocketed from there. Um, now, when I got out of high school, I joined the army uh, as a 25 Bravo informational technology specialist. And I've been in the military for the last four years. And um, ever since then, I've just been trying to learn uh, as much about computers as possible. Um, and I think I've uh, I had a love for computers a little bit more than my peers. So um, I just eat the information up. As far as general classes, you know, math, science, reading, um, I wasn't too strong at. So it did kind of deter me at first into, you know, doing a full dive into computer science and reaching some of the deeper, more conceptual aspects. Um, but once I started rolling with it, I, I just found I love it and you know, I keep studying it to this day. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, like I said, you gave me a, a really good list of questions. I definitely want to deep dive into those. Uh, so you said 25 Bravo. So um, I've worked with 25 Bravo, Sierras, uh, Novembers. So I'm kind of familiar with the career field. Um, Signal is awesome in the Army. I, I spent the last five years um, working for the Joint Communication Support Element. When I was back in the States, uh, which is very army, like yeah. you, know, you talk to army people and they're like, it's very not army, <laughs> but um, go, let's, let's just jump right into it. Like, what are some of your questions? Sure. Uh, first and foremost, I definitely wanted to ask you about your background. Um, and you jump perfectly to the, uh, the JCSE. Uh, yes. I know you've been in the military yourself and uh, just tell us a little bit about your experience and what you've been doing up to this point. Got you. Uh, so still in, like, don't let, don't let the, the facial hair fool you. Uh, <laughs> I, I hit 19 years um, and I will hit 19 years in March um, and I'm starting to go through my transition. Um, I like, love, love the Air Force, uh, wish I could stay in forever, but um, you know, it's just, it's, I feel it's, it's time for me to make the transition over to um, corporate America um, and kind of flex the skills that the, uh, Air Force and the, the Department of Defense in general has uh, has given me the opportunity to uh, to develop. Uh, so again, 19 years. Uh, I joined back in 03. Um, I've had three. I'm on my third career field and never changed career fields. Yes, uh, it's kind of crazy. So originally I was a, a what we call um, a 2E2. So we have AFSCs, um, Air Force Specialty Codes. They they're very similar to your MOSs, uh, but we like to switch ours up. <laughs> so it was a 2e2 data maintenance so i um it was a guy who would uh tear equipment apart to fix it solder boards things of that nature uh we got folded into uh telephones and circuit actions um and all that in cryptography so i became a 3d1 x2 which is cyber transport so we're uh, the layer four guys um you know pushing packets all over the place building networks is where i started to get my love for cisco um and just command line and building networks, designing networks, all that good stuff. Um, did that for the bulk of my uh, my 19 years um, and slowly moved on to going from uh, tactical to um, fixed comm when I worked for the NSA for a, a period of time to enterprise level when I was in Virginia. So I did that for almost six years uh, working. I think we had 120 locations at the time, doing their base boundaries, things of that nature. That's when I started to get into um, project management a little bit uh, and mostly building up those skills. So SEC plus, net plus, CCNA, all that good stuff. Then I moved 
to Florida where I did JCSE for a quarter of my career. Um, that's a joint communication support element. Uh, those guys are everywhere. Um, we are tactical, we're fixed, we're any, anything. Like you need uh, a network in a parking lot, a desert, a forest, <laughs> we, we make it happen. Uh, and that's why I got my project management skills up, got my PMP, um, as well as I uh, started getting into cybersecurity. So I've been doing that for probably combined total of six years out of the 19. So 19 years of IT, uh, almost 10 years of project management, and now I'm on like my year six of cybersecurity because the, the DOD had a shift where it's like, okay, we, we build these tactical networks. How do we secure them? Uh, and they started pushing us towards like, figure this out. Um, and I, I guess I showed um, uh, a passion for it. Like I, I really did want to know, like, how do I secure this network that I, I built? You know, how do I protect my baby? Um, and then they uh, pushed me towards getting my CEH, my, my CISP, and then I uh, pursued my master's in cybersecurity information assurance and finished that uh, just before the pandemic uh, hit. So like late 19, early 2020. Um, and then since then, I've just been pursuing different uh, avenues in cybersecurity. I'm really big into um, risk management. Like I really like that. I think it pairs well with my project management um, certification and, and experience. Um, and uh, I have a lot of um, identity access management, things of that nature. Like it, I went basically the from securing a port on a switch or a router to designing a network to be secure is kind of uh, where I'm at in my my journey. Okay, nice. Yeah, uh, I, I actually am a big fan of uh, risk management myself. I've always loved okay. you know quantitative versus qualitative, the risk assessments, you know the not so sexy stuff that a lot of my PhD, yeah. uh, I actually really enjoy it. You know, the paper slog, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you. It's it, like people, I, I don't think they sleep on it. They just, people don't really um, enjoy it, but I don't know. I've always been that, that type of person. Like I, I, I love my uh, time in QA. Um, mm. I, um, I love looking at like the RMF packages and the uh, authorities to connect and all that stuff. Like it's very dry material, but like you learn risk, risk frameworks, um, you know, uh, and pursuing my degree, a lot of my papers were on PCI DSS. So like the banking system, uh, NIST, uh, FISMA, those type of things like uh, governance policy. Like it's, it's I, I enjoy it, but you know, people want to be pen testers and things of that nature. And I get it. Like forensics is, is cool. Um, but I, I like being a person who is not afraid to say no, but I will find a way to yes, right? Mm -hmm. I, I will figure out like, this is what you want to do and it might be unrealistic, but here's the compromise to keep you safe uh, and mitigate those threats and also give you some flexibility. I think that's very uh, uh, underrepresented uh, when, when we talk cyber to the public. Yeah, most definitely from their perspective, they, you know, the the commonplace black hoodie dark room no windows you know hacking right. away at a keyboard <laughs> kind of thing uh okay so um can i dive a little bit more into your military experience so you've been in for 19 years and um of course thank you for your service that's that is a long time uh to do this type of job and i know the military yeah, the, the op tempo is is so high uh and the demand is so much for you and your family and stuff like that um how is your home life balance um, when you consider the military and college and all the things that you've done in your career up to this point? Uh, how have you been able to, um, you know, balance your personal life with your professional development? Got you. So uh, an ever evolving process. So um, I've always been really big into um, studying and um, I just, I like learning new things. So, um, that's hard to balance. Like now, as I'm, I, I'm getting older, right? So I spent, when I, when I finally retire, I will have been spent more time in the military than uh, as a civilian. Like over half my life will be military, uh, and I'm trying to figure out what that looks like uh, as we speak. So <laughs> that transition is still, it's still a work in progress, and probably will be for years. Uh, I would say what I learned was, you have to make time for your, uh, for your family. So like the the military is going to ask a lot of you um and that's just that you volunteer for that right we're all volunteers like no one is being told they have to be in the military um and you have to figure out 
like early on, I would say, like it took me a little bit longer, um, where to take a break. So like when you have your leave, when you have your, um, your times when you have a lull, you need to use that time to focus on uh, whether it be, you know, uh, your family that you built or your family that you came from or your friends or your pets, or you just have to find some time to be with those people who care about you. Uh, not to say that your military family doesn't care about you because they do, but this is a season, right? Like even 20 years is a season of my life. Um, and those people will always be there for you uh, if you properly nourish that, that relationship. So I, I'd learned that probably uh halfway through so i was very focused military like like i need to learn as much as i can i need to get all these certifications i need to continue to build i need to craft get my skill up and what have you uh, and i still want to do that I, I still do right um but i find time like for my family um it, it's kind of hard to explain right now because i've been overseas for over a year so i'm kind of away from them uh you know, mission, mission calls, right? Um, but the focus is like, when I have that time, I try to communicate with them as much as possible. And when I get back, uh, the, the goal is to find a, um, a business or corporation that respects my time and that I can spend that time with my family. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, so getting, um, going back and looking at um, your, your pivot into cybersecurity, you started with, um, you know, network administration, uh, you said you worked with a lot of um, hard devices, routers, switches, firewalls, right. implementing them, building networks and securing them. Um, when you started to pivot into the, the security aspect and you started to touch on the cybersecurity, uh, what was the most difficult part for you? And did your uh, background prior to going into cybersecurity help uh, at all uh, with that transition? I think it marries well. So uh, I was talking to um, Aisha Hollins on Tech Connect about it. I think, because um, you can come into cybersecurity without an IT background. Like I'm not gonna, like a lot of people are like, no, you need to know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can if that's, if that's um, the way you function, the way that your, your mind works. Mine does not. I'm very tactile type person. I need to touch it. And if I, if I touch it and I can break it down, then I can understand it at a higher level. That's just me. That's just the way that my mind works, right? So I think it it helped me um, phenomenally. Like I know what a network is. I know how to build a network. I know how packets move around that network. And then here are the things to uh, to protect it. It's baked in from the beginning, right? So early on in my career, that was not baked in there. Uh, that's not kind of what they taught us uh, originally. Like like security was always a a thing, right? Like there's always security above, but it was never. Uh, a thing where it's baked in at the at the beginning, like, okay, let's think about how to build this network and how to secure it properly. That kind of evolved over time. So I would say probably 2009 or so. Um, so probably five or six years into my IT experience, that's when we started talking about 8570 requirements and to uh, touch the network, you had to have security plus, which is a, I, I believe is a really good uh, introduction into uh, Cybersecurity, like a lot of people are like, nah, security plus, because everybody has to have it, yada, yada, yada. Um, I, and I get that if you're just testing a test, but if you're if you're if you're testing the the knowledge that you've learned, like you're actually learning the, the material, it it's a, a boon and and like here's everything that we can possibly throw at you at entry level. Um, and then how do you apply it to your network? And I, I think that really helped me out a lot. I think my help desk experience helped me. I did a couple of years uh, help desk when I was working for NSA. About half my time was uh, circuit actions. So pushing packets around um, all, all types of different networks, um, Cisco, Juniper, um, Sonnet, all that good stuff. And then um, taking over the comm focal point and actually doing the help desk work because it, it teaches you um, more than just your portion of the network um because we're all segmented right like um bravos do a certain thing sierra's do a certain thing november's do a certain thing same thing for us right we have client systems we have uh transport we have uh radio like we're all broken in different components but when you work help desk you get to see all of it so like i'm learning directory services stuff right and learning exchange things um and then how to tell customers or how to break down the customers like 
what you're asking for is not a thing. <laughs> and this yeah. is how it works. And this is how we can get you to a better place. And I think that all ties in together. Uh, so I always push like, if you can work for a company in, in, on the help desk as, as um, your entry in, I think it gives you a, a really good point to pivot into cybersecurity, but you don't have to. That's not that's not everybody's journey, but it, it, it definitely like the tech helped me get into cyber. Yeah, uh, I really love that about the the IT field, um, how flexible it is, uh, how, you know, one person's can start to traditional health desk route and uh, go all the way up to senior level CISO, or you could just come right out the street, you know, start studying your own, building your own computers and, you know, right. um, get where you need to be. Um, yeah, so and, then, far... and nothing's, nothing's wrong with labbing. Like, I want to put it out there as well. Yeah. Like, uh, lab is very close to real environment. Like, so when you're learning switching and routing, you lab a lot. Same thing with um, uh, pen testing and things of that nature. Like, lab, enjoy it. Like, because every company's not going to bring you in with, uh, you know, no experience and then nurture you and then build that up. But if you bring something to the table, like, hey, I have, you know, uh, try hack me and all these other things, like hack the box. Like, I have all this... Um, virtual knowledge I can bring to the table, then I think you'll more likely be hired. Okay. Um, how was your experience with uh, Western Governors University? I know you said you got your, your master's degree for them uh, right before yes. the pandemic started. So it, it was great. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I think for me, it took uh, 18 months. I think I could have shaved, or I'm sorry, 15 months. I think I could have shaved it down to a year. Uh, but they allow you to... Um, go to school at your own rate. So like you'll sign up for like two classes, but you can take up to four or five. Um, pace yourself. So I signed up for two, I wound up taking five, and then I had to take three months off as <laughs> so I burnt myself out. Cause it, they'll just allow you to keep going. They're like they, they'll encourage you uh, to give you the tools. You get a mentor um, who will follow up on you. And then as you knock those classes out, or he or she will be like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and take another one. Like, do you feel comfortable? Yada, yada, yada. Like, yeah. Um, and then that fifth class, I was worn out. It was, uh, it was forensics. And I was like, all right, I need to take a break. So I took three months off. Um, then I came back and I, I finished up. So um, if you pace yourself, it's, it's really good. And what made you decide to pursue the master's degree? Uh, I'm assuming you don't have your bachelor's degree uh, from WGU? No. So my, uh, it's, it's crazy, right? So um, my associates is an Air Force associate in IT. Mm -hmm. um but then uh, there was a point where i was going to um potentially get out of the, the military and i i was a computer science dropout um coming in so like i was a computer science major um i was working full-time going to school full-time it was not working out for me um, i tried to pursue it again once i joined the military and i quickly learned that uh uh math is not my strong point to, to a certain degree right so when i got into calculus i was working the hardest I had ever worked at a class and I'm still only getting uh, a seat. Um, and I was like, there's more math. <laughs> we're we're going to continuously go up from here. So I looked at all of my electives. I said, what do I enjoy doing? Um, and it was um, psychology classes. So, so psychology, sociology. So I pivoted hard from IT into uh, social psychology is what my, my bachelor's was in. Um, and then that was, I finished it off just in time to, um, uh, pursue security plus net plus uh, and all that stuff. And I, I, my passion for it grew again. And then I started to look at all of what's the cybersecurity thing. Um, and then I took a very long educational break. Um, uh, I, I still pursued certifications. I got those and what have you. But then when I was looking at, okay, I, I know my time in the military uh, could potentially end at 20. Um, I don't really have aspirations to go too far over 20. Let me look at a master's. And I was like, well, I, I don't want to go back to psychology because I'm not going to pursue that when I get out. I'm like really big into cyber right now. Uh, and I always will have a passion for IT. And that's when I started looking at um, schools. Uh, Park uh, was where I got my, my bachelor's at. They had a really good program. But then I heard about WGU from coworkers and the, the flexibility there. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going. I'm going WGU. Yeah, uh, that, that's uh, almost the same story. I, I was at work one day. One of my coworkers pulled me to the side. Yeah. Are you in college? No. All right. We're going to the Ed Center right now. Show me WGU. Right. You know, we sign up for the courses and, you know, it, it uh, like you said, it, it just allows you to get, get so much done, get all the resources up front. You know, you don't have to um, sink a lot of your time 
into um, a lot of the fat, you know, uh, for traditional right. colleges. Right, right. And, and you just have to be, so there's nothing wrong with uh, wanting to be in a brick and mortar. I teach at brick and mortar. Um, I, I enjoy that aspect as well, seeing people interacting with the students, seeing the light bulb go off. Like, I really enjoy that. Um, but you don't always have time for that as a student. Um, sometimes, like for us, we deploy a lot, we go TDY a lot. Like you need the ability to just do it on your own at your own speed. And I, it really afforded me that. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, so throughout your your journey so far, um, obviously you're a media creator now. You've been putting out things on YouTube and LinkedIn and several different platforms. What inspired you to become a media creator, uh, specifically for IT and cybersecurity? Uh, so I, I kind of always wanted to do something. I wasn't sure what it was, whether it be um, a YouTube channel or uh, a podcast or something like that. Uh, but actually the, the COVID, so the isolation aspect of it uh, pushed me over the edge. So when I arrived uh, overseas at my current assignment, uh, we had to be isolated for a long period of time um, just because you had to make sure you weren't symptomatic, um, you weren't going to spread it coming you know, from country to country, all that good stuff. Uh, so I was locked in the room for two or three weeks. Um, and I, I have uh, a mentor. So Jeff Lodick, he's a, a retired army. He's a author, podcaster, um, public speaker. Like he does all that uh, after, like during and after his retirement, right? Um, he had a podcast and I was like, well, you know, uh, teach me, like, let, let me know, like how, how, hard is this? And then he started explaining the tools and what have you. And then here's the entry level, like here's how you can come in and, and, uh, and do it and what have you. Uh, so then I recorded a, a small session by myself, hated it, <laughs> absolutely hated it. I was like, I need, I need, I can't just talk in a vacuum, uh, especially about this material because it's coming off dry, I'm monotone type person. Uh, how do I make this more palatable? Um, and uh, as well as how do I showcase more people who look like me? Uh, because at the same time, I was learning that we're very diverse in the military, right? When it comes to IT and cyber and all that stuff. I started reading articles. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, this might be my last assignment. Let me see what the, like on the outside. And I was seeing that like we make up at the time, we made up 7% of, uh, of IT and cyber, like 7% were people of color, uh, which is a huge difference than, uh, than what we have in the military. And only 3% of those were in those senior uh, level positions, so C-suite positions. Uh, and I was like, how do I, how do I find these people? Because it's such a small community. How do I network, network with these people? And I was like, you know what? I think the podcast might be that connected tissue. Um, like, so we began to record. Uh, since then, the podcast has evolved, right? It used to be one big podcast, about an hour, hour and a half. We had different topics, what have you. Uh, we cut back on that, um, not on the uh, the content. We cut back on the time. We we noticed the uh, the trend was people would listen to like the first fifteen minutes, and then that'd be it. We're like, well, we're producing all this stuff. Let's break into smaller chunks. Uh, I talked to again, uh, Jeff, my my mentor. He was like, yeah, like you got to make it palatable. You got to make it so people can consume it. Uh, so we broke it down to now we're uh, Monday and Tuesday are our topics. They last about anywhere between 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and then Wednesday, we do a discussion because uh, we always liked bouncing ideas off of each other because we all have different viewpoints, right? So I'm, I'm uh, by trade, a cyber transport guy. Uh, and I, you know, I have uh, some really good knowledge in, in cyber um, when it comes to that aspect of cybersecurity and policy governance, that type of stuff. Then we have uh, Shannon. So Shannon uh, is uh, a vulnerability assessment uh, background, retired Air Force. Uh, he's a information system security officer, so an ISO. So he brings that to the table. We have Levon. Levon, uh, we, we all met in Virginia, by the way, at the enterprise level. Um, and we've since, we're in three different time zones now. But Levon uh, brought to the table, uh, when I met him, he was working Active Directory uh, Exchange, and now he's a uh, cloud architect. So he brings that cybersecurity to the table. He's also a graduate from WGU with his master's in cybersecurity. Uh, and we're all three people of color, right? So you had three black men uh, discussing cybersecurity, which there's not a lot of that out there. There are there are some podcasts, but there's not a lot of them. Like we're, we're definitely a minority in the space. And then we have people on the show, like um, your Chelsea Pierre's, your Aisha Hollins, your uh, Gabe Davis, uh, Johnny Jones, um, 
who come on the show. And these are all also people of color who are doing things in the space, right? Uh, we show that, hey, we, we do this. Like, this is not, this is not, um, uh, these people are not unicorns. These people exist. They, they've built upon years of experience and what have you. And there are people like us in the space. And then uh, to kind of land, land because this is a long answer to your question, right? Yeah. Um, I started to uh, communicate with people on um, LinkedIn who wanted, they had questions, right? Like, how do I get into cyber? Like, how do I pivot? Like, you know, um, your uh, uh, Tish Harpers and, and things of that nature. I, I thought about it, like, why don't I just make that an episode? Like, why don't I get these people on the show? So I can, I can show them, uh, I can show the audience that, hey, you're not the only one pursuing this, uh, A. And then B, there's a, a huge amount of people of color who are trying to get into the space. So now we, we have it from both ends of the spectrum, right? We can show you that C-suite level uh, person, and we can also show you the person who's making that that change or trying to get into cybersecurity. So I was like, but let's do it. So that's when this Thursday episode came out. Um, and then Fridays, we talk about everything else. So we just try to unwind. <laughs> It was like, again, you got to you got to make those contacts, right? Like I, I get to talk to some really good friends who are across the ocean about what they've been watching, what they've been reading, you know, just what they've been doing with their family. Um, and we get to show that aspect as well to our, uh, our our listeners. Like you don't have to be cybersecurity to IT 24-7. You can take a break. You can pursue something else. Most definitely, most definitely. Um yeah, I saw on your LinkedIn profile or as we were uh, looking through that yeah, you had some some involvement with uh, Blacks in cybersecurity, and I saw that you are definitely an advocate for minorities in the cybersecurity space. And um, yeah, yeah, you're definitely um, someone we look up to um, I as a person of color myself trying to break into the cybersecurity spectrum. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like, uh, and and the network is is growing, right? So we're just a little tiny piece of it, but like Twitter is booming with um, Blacks in tech and uh, cybersecurity. Like, and like you mentioned, you have the Cybersecurity Association of Blacks in cybersecurity as well. Um, and then they share my content, you know, like they'll, they'll reshare the, the, uh, the post that I put out there. So like, it's nothing but love in the network. Like definitely, if you're not a part of it, definitely join uh, one of these various organizations. You also have like um, uh, WESIS for uh, women in cybersecurity. Um, uh, I know there's some Latinx uh, groups as well, uh, uh, business uh, uh, peoples uh, in cybersecurity. Like there's, if there's a space for you. You just have to uh, uh, hit it, put in the search bar. Okay, definitely. Uh, and I'm going to pivot to uh, some more hard hitting questions. Um, some ones that, you know, not usual, typical interview questions that uh, we kind of put together. So what has changed recently in cybersecurity uh, in this field that you dislike? So uh, maybe a certain tech gotcha. or a certain mentality, way of doing things. Uh, there's necessarily a way of doing things. Um, there's also a negative aspect to the uh, to reaching out um, because there's a lot of misconception, right? Like uh, it's, it's uh, there's a, a difference between IT and cybersecurity, right? So IT is mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the the bones, the skeleton. This is what builds the uh, the networks and makes them function um, for a company. Versus cybersecurity, which is um, uh, the the protection of the company um, and whatever governance that that it falls within. So they're separate, but they marry well together. Uh, and there's a, a misconception. People don't know what to pursue, and when they, when they reach out, sometimes they get beat over the head, like, oh, you should know better or you should know this. Well, they don't. That's why they reached out. So I, I, that part I don't like, but I think that just, that's social media in itself. Uh, I see more positive than negative, but there is a lot of um, uh, negativity sometimes when somebody just asks a question. So I, I will never do that. Like, if you ask me a question, I'll, I'll swear, if, even if it's something I've answered a thousand times, I'll answer it a thousand and one, like, like maybe you didn't hear it. Uh, so this is how this functions and like help people out. So that part I don't like. I don't, I don't like when people are like, oh, you don't, you don't understand, you don't need to be here. Well, that's, you didn't understand at one point either. So <laughs> like help them and then, you know, uh, shout it from the, from the mountaintops. Like get, get, get more people like us in the, uh, the space. Yeah, most definitely. Um, okay, so what certifications or credentials or skill sets um, are not actively being used by you right now? 
uh, what's kind of things that you've gathered and they've been uh, sitting on the shelf? Oh man, so things I'm not currently using. So I'm not currently using um, my CCNA. Uh, so I'm not banging on the keyboard doing command line stuff and I do miss it. Um, but as you progress in the military, you get less technical and you get more managerial. That's just the, the way the space works. So I'm a senior non-commissioned officer now. The only time I get to touch equipment is when I sneak off. <laughs> when I'm trying to teach somebody something, like, oh, like I, I, I will drop paperwork in a second. Like, oh, this is broke. Let me, let me help you. <laughs> but it's a balance, right? Like you can't take over. Like I'm, I'm supposed to be training and teaching. Um, so those skills are a little rusty. Um, I tried to... Um, read up as much as possible but uh again you know you atrophy at a certain point so I, I definitely miss command line stuff um and then i would say everything else it, i use an aspect of it right i'm not I'm, I'm not using all of my pmp um but the way the military does project management um is slightly different so i'm not using it to the pmi standard all the time um because it's, it's different uh scope schedule cost uh, it's different for a co corporation than it is for the military. Um, uh, aside from that, I try to use all aspects as much as possible. So that's why I got into teaching. I was like, well, I don't want my CISP uh, to go to waste. Like, uh, so when I finished my degree, I immediately looked for a campus that would allow me to come on as an adjunct. Uh, and I've been doing that. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not physically touching stuff, but I'm, uh, uh, in, you know, putting that knowledge out, trying to get people to understand, especially people who are not, again, from IT. Like, I might have a background in, I had a, a psychology major in one of my classes. So, like, we're, day one, we're talking about networks. And that's not her thing. So I'm trying to, you know, show her the DARPA net video that they always show us, like, when we're yeah. in training, you know what I mean? Like, stuff like that, like, trying to make it practical to, to her. And then she got A in the class. Like, so I, I really enjoy that type of stuff. So uh, I would say there's always a way to use those certifications in some aspect, but uh, you can't use them all, all the time. Like, there's no there's no magical job. Like there's some full stack jobs that are out there, but they're not the few and far between when it comes to um, using everything all at once. No. Yeah. Okay. So um, how did your upbringing affect um, your development in IT and cybersecurity. And uh, attached to that is, do you think that you are who you are today because of your upbringing or in spite of your upbringing? Ooh, that's a, a deep question. Okay. Uh, I would say, I think my upbringing complemented my personality, which complements what I do. Um, I'm a tinkerer, right? Um, so growing up, if something broke, I would take it apart. And if I could fix it, I would fix it. Or, you know, most things did not get fixed. <laughs> most boom boxes died there on, on the on the table, right, while I was doing surgery. But it gave me um, a passion to figure things out, um, not necessarily to be cheap, but, you know, if I can fix it, fix it. Um, and then I've taken that into IT. And then um, I think it, it married well with, um, like, project management, things of that nature, like thinking on the fly. Um, and trying to make that stuff uh, work. I would say I'm an only child, so communication, or I grew up an only child. I have a half brother and, uh, and sister, um, but the majority of my life I, I was the, by myself, right? So uh, I would say the military uh, helped raise that part of me. Like I have no problem speaking in front of people now. Um, I have no problem uh, like in the teaching aspect because these are things that they 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 teach you, teach you discipline, they teach you communication skills. You have to be able to you know uh, explain to higher up, just like you would have to explain to a C uh, C suite uh, like a CEO. Like, all right, this is how this is impacting your business, or this is how this is impacting our troops, or this is how you know what I mean. So you, you get a lot of that as well, especially as you move up the ranks, uh, and they they nurture that. Um, I would say nothing, this, there would be no despite. I, I didn't have anything, like everybody has their, their, their struggles and their challenges growing up and what have you. I don't think any of those have hurt me. Uh, if anything, they've made me work harder. And again, that goes down to personality, right? Like some people are, are born a certain way. Like some people uh, are hard, hard headed. I will put myself in that category, like in a, a positive way. Um, if I want to do something, I'm going to try to figure out a way to do it. Um, 
and just press forward um, as, as much as possible. Like that's not the way everybody is wired, but that is just, I didn't, I didn't make that. You know I mean, I was just born with it. And I think it's helped me a lot uh, in the military. And I think it's helped me to uh, make better um, uh, decisions and choices, um, you know, mitigate risks and things of that nature. Like I, I don't ever want to not be a part of the communities I'm part of because of uh, bad choices or mistakes. I, I can, I can see something and learn vicariously through that. Like, okay, he touched fire <laughs> and it burnt him. I'm not going to touch that fire. Yeah. Um, well, let's figure out a way to put the fire out to make it safer. So. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, do you believe in the pay for mentorship model? Um, if you're familiar with that. So I'm, I'm not, I, I did read, a, read ahead and I saw that when I was like, I'm not going to ask beforehand because I, I want you to teach me what that is um, so in my I, mind i don't i don't like it <laughs> from the from from just the, the reading part i'm just like pay for mentorship <laughs> yeah so there there are certain um certain individuals out there or certain corporations whose entire job is to uh offer mentorship as a service so me being a student or someone uh new to cybersecurity and um instead of reaching out to you, for example, you know, um, I would look at someone uh, prominent in the cybersecurity space and they would charge a certain rate or maybe a subscription based service or one-time payment oh, okay. in order to receive that mentorship, uh, then they might. And it's not like, um, it's different from like resume writing, for example, you know, where you pay someone to organize your collective experience, uh, you're more or right. less paying someone um, to try to guide you or build the path for you, you know, as a mentor or a coach or, you know, non-commissioned officer would do. Gotcha. So now to explain it to me, it's kind of always existed, right? Like you, you buy a self-help book, you, um, you'll subscribe um, to a personalities podcast or whatever, uh, or their, um, their video series, like, um, like if they're a teacher, right? Like, so like CBT Nuggets is a, is a big one. Like you, you pay some pretty good money, but you also get some really good material. Um, I would say if done properly, like um, time is money. And if this person has collected a, a ton of experience that can be impactful to you in your journey, um, it may be beneficial to pay for that time. Because um, again, time is finite. Uh, I don't do anything like that to my knowledge. Well, I mean, kind of like a teacher, right? So if I'm teaching a class, the, uh, the university's paying me for that. Um, it's not free, but I also give out free as well. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so like on my podcast or on my page or when people reach out, like I, a ton more people reach out to me and I answer them through uh, email than show up on the show. A lot of people just don't want, you know what I mean? That's not their thing. Like they don't feel comfortable being, being on the show, but I don't want to not answer a question. You know what I mean? Like, um, cause I would feel as though that was kind of like, not spiteful, but um, if I can make the time, I'll make the time. And I, I have a lot of time away from my family. Um, so in a roundabout way of answering your question, um, I think it that could be beneficial. Like if that person is like a guru in what they do, uh, perhaps you need to pay for their time, go to their seminar. You know, I mean, like people do that, right? People, public speaking is humongous. Uh, I'm not in that, that sphere um, per se, but it may be something I, I pursue in the future. Um, and then public speakers get paid for that time by that, that company or that business. Like they're not necessarily being paid by the people, but they're providing a service to the people who have paid ahead of time. <laughs> so yeah. um, I can't knock that, that I can't even uh, knock that hustle. Like your time is, is worth money. Um, but if you're not providing uh, quality with that, whatever you're selling, then that, that, that is a problem, but it's always been like that. People have always been selling snake oil. So that's, that's a thing as well. Right. Yeah. Um, so we were on, on upon, so you, you've educated me. So upon reading it, I was like, pay, pay for mentorship. <laughs> the mentorship is a service, but yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of what it is, right? Like you're paying for these seminars, you're paying for these videos or these subscriptions to, um, what, whomever, like, you know how many, uh, books I've read <laughs> yeah. to, you know, to get to the certifications and whatnot. And I, I, I paid for that, for that book or that, that subscription or what have you to get to it. So, um, I think it has value. 
Okay, so now I have a kind of a long question. I'm trying to funnel it down, make it a little bit more concise. Um, the question is, does the different types of uh, mediums, right, in which we use to communicate now today, uh, like texting, video conferences, Discord groups, and things like that, uh, have a profound impact on developing the relationships in cybersecurity? Uh, does it hurt them relationships in your uh, ex experience or your opinion? Or does it help build them to be even stronger relationships? Um, you know, how the comparison between face-to-face -face and uh, electronic communication, uh, that kind of thing. So I think more avenues to, to learn and to connect to people uh, is, is always positive. Uh, you're always gonna have disinformation. Um, we try to our best to weed that out, right? In our communities, typically you see people get outed or you get pushed out um, because of it. Um, I think, especially now, it's 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 been it's more than beneficial because we can't always make contact with people um, due to whatever wave of uh, COVID is out there or whatever um, uh, meetups and whatnot have to be canceled because of it. Um, so I think it's definitely beneficial. Um, I've I've always been uh, even before COVID. I've always felt like finding a network. It was always uh, uh, beneficial to to you and a uh, boon to your um, your ability to find that person that may be able to break down or explain something just perfect to you. Um, so I, I think it's always beneficial. Um, I, I think people should always be seeking um, communities, and I, I think especially now um, they're they're worth their weight in gold. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, there's, there's always going to be disinformation out there. Um, you just have to like. Trust but verify. That's that's always the the model, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, okay, I heard it from you. It, it makes sense. Let me go hear it from two or three other people also to see how how it mirrors uh, one another, and then just go from there. Like, never just trust one source. And but now you have a, a billion of them, right? <laughs> you have access to almost every human being on the planet. Yeah, I know certain countries. Uh, the internet is becoming um, one of their human rights. You know, they're actually writing in the laws right. like you should have access to the internet, you know? So it's, uh, it's definitely right. growing. Right, I mean, at some point it's gonna be just, well, like obviously you need running water or you die, but <laughs> at some point, uh, just just to get information, like just just to, to be fair, like you need multiple viewpoints um, just to be able to make your own informed decision. And I think that that will never go away. Like um, just as the newspapers, the printing presses of, of back in the day, the internet is that your, your Twitters, your, your Facebooks and whatever mm -hmm. network comes uh, up behind them. Yeah. Um, so how do you evaluate yourself? Do you compare yourself to your peers uh, at all? And if you do, uh, what kind of factors do you determine that based off of uh, their education path or their age, maybe their years of experience in cybersecurity? Uh, so I, I use it as a, uh, a measuring rod of where I want to be. So I find people who are already in that space, who are already at that level. And uh, let's just like, you're asking me these questions. I ask them that question, like, what got you there? What did you do? Everybody's path is different. Um, I believe everything happens for a reason, right? So um, the way I got to where I'm at now is because of a lot of smaller things, a lot of people and influences, um, mostly good, some bad. You know, you learn from your bad teachers uh, just as much as you learn from your good teachers. Um, so I look to those people and I ask those questions, just just like you are. Like, hey, how did you how did you uh, get here? You know, I mean, how many how many years of experience? Um, who are your mentors? Like, what did you look at before you got here? Um, it's a big thing when transition, right? Like, I've reached out to Veterati. I got a mentor uh, who's in a space that's in the, in the city I want to retire in. Like, how did you you know get to where you're at? Uh, what resources did you use to get there? Um, uh, I never in a negative way, like I never see somebody and be like, oh man, I'm not measuring up because they're doing so much better than me. Um, everybody has their own path. Like some people don't have to work uh, as hard as, as I, I did. They just absorb information differently than I do. Um, it, it just is what it is. We're all built differently. We all take, take information in differently. Uh, you just have to learn and master the way that you absorb information um, to get to where you want to be at. So I, I know I'm a tactile learner. Uh, so I. I go touch it and I figure it out. And then I, I build upon that. Uh, some people, they just, it's almost osmosis, right? They touch the, they take the, the textbook, put it to their head and it's just like, oh, I know, <laughs> I know everything. Yeah. 
um, I can't I can't kick myself because I, I can't do that. It's just not the way I was built. Okay, and kind of the uh, the reverse side of the coin for that question, uh, which you kind of alluded to, um, is have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? And if so, how do you deal with that in your day to day life? Oh yeah, it's almost. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say it's daily. It's not daily, right? Um, my nine to five, I, I feel very confident in what I do. Um, not not because I'm I'm cocky about it, but I have years of experience, right? I can I can think back to uh, you know over the course of 19 years and, and kind of figure out what what I need to do and uh, where I need to be. Um, but as I branch into the transition, oh yeah, yeah, you you definitely feel it. It's like oh man, like they've been doing this on the outside for 19 years. You know how do I compare to that? What do they do? Um, it's to ask those questions, find those people. Um, I've, I have not had too much negative feedback, right? Like I reach out to somebody and I usually get an answer. It's, uh, you know, every now and then you, you run into somebody and they, they won't give you an answer. Uh, I'd rather get that than get disinformation. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd rather you ignore me than give me bad advice. Um, it's something that everybody's gonna have to deal with, uh, or maybe not. Like it's something I will always have to deal with, I believe. And the way I combat it is, um, through application so like i i know i'm about to have a breakthrough or i'm about to reach a a new milestone by the level of my discomfort like if i don't feel comfortable it's growth uh because i i i I typically don't choose a path that will cause me harm or cause uh you know um like i'm not gonna pick something bad uh on purpose you know what i mean like if i feel like okay I'm about to do, like, I, I went live with Aisha the other day. Never went live before. I record everything. <laughs> it's, like, I need to see it before everybody else sees it uh, to make sure it, it makes sense. It's on brand. I'm not talking crazy. So I went live and I felt super uncomfortable going into it, but it was a great experience. Um, same thing with teaching. My first class that I taught, I felt very uncomfortable. I felt the imposter syndrome kick in. Like, oh, man, I'm a, I'm a whole teacher now. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Like, am, am I ready for this? Like, am, are they going to learn something? And then the proof is in the pudding, right? Like I teach something five different ways um, and finally figure out a way that clicks with that student. And you're like, okay, I got it. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so again, it's that discomfort, that's, that's growth that's your, that you're feeling. So uh, pursue it and, and push through it. Like we, we, we all got it. It's just a matter of, uh, of uh, honing our craft and getting better at, at doing it. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, one of my final questions for you is, uh, what, are your, what are some of your plans uh, for the future? Uh, can you kind of lay us out uh, where you expect to go in the next four or five, six years? Of course, you're retiring soon. and are going to move into the enterprise. So uh, the transition is is real, right? So I'm, I'm uh, probably... 14 months from, from being a whole civilian again <laughs> in life, you know what I mean? Like, so that, that is a little um, worrisome and not because I'm afraid of finding employment or anything like that. It's just, it's going to be different. Like when I was um, prior to me joining the military, you know, I was a teenager. Uh, I only had a handful of jobs. Most of them were fast food. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like none of them, none of them were IT related. None of them were cybersecurity related or project management or, or what have you. And over the course of 19 years, I've, I've learned discipline, I've learned uh, organization, and I've, uh, I've become educated and have practical experience. And I wanna apply that uh, in that community as well. Uh, it, it may be difficult, it may be easy. I, I'm not sure yet, I'm not out there. Um, but again, I'm reaching out to those people who have made the transition and uh, just trying to learn like what were the challenges and the hurdles when they got there so I could try to avoid them again vicariously like what what fires did you touch (laughs) so I can avoid those Um, and I I hope in in five years to be um, spending much more time with my family uh, and doing something that I love Um, so right now I'm thinking policy and governance might be for me I might be somebody's Izzo um, uh, but ultimately, uh, I don't know if I could do it in five years. It may take me longer. Uh, I want to be my own boss. I want to be, uh, you know, in the, in the space, maybe a visa, so maybe a consultant, maybe something of that nature. Uh, but again, I learned through 
application. So I don't want to jump straight to that uh, and, and shoot my shot. Maybe I could, maybe I couldn't, but I want to work for someone doing those things, build those building blocks, and then be able to take all that knowledge I learned on the outside world and then do it for myself, ultimately. So uh, five years would be great. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know if I could do it that fast though, right? Um, but that's ultimately where I, where I, uh, I want to see myself um, still creating content. I don't know if it'll be on the same platform. So I'm doing it now, you know, five years from now, it could be something new out there. I could be doing it in the metaverse for all I know if that's ever comes to fruition. Yeah. Um, but, and, and teaching, like I always want to have that in my back pocket. I always want to pass on my knowledge to other people uh, in some, some regard, like whether it be still um, doing the, the adjunct for a different um, uh, college or uh, maybe I'd go into public speaking space. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And um, being a adjunct at a college and, you know, doing podcasts and YouTube, it, it's a great thing. I mean, they're always saying to give back to your community, you know, the best way to learn is to teach, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but for someone right. new in the cybersecurity space, um, how would you recommend they start to give back to their community? By joining a group. Like, so the, these groups, um, patronage is, is king. Like, mm. you make the community better. It makes more people join. Uh, then the, just the way human beings work, right? The numbers uh, cause more people. Like, oh, there's 10,000 people in this group. <laughs> you know, it's got to be full of good knowledge. And it usually is. Um, join those groups. Join your um, your um, Blacks in Cybersecurity, your uh, Black Cyber Associations, your uh, WESIS, like join those organizations and bring your talent to them and ask those questions and build build upon each other, right? If you find a resource, bring it with you. Um, I always try to update my, my. here's my top 10 things I did um, when, when studying for the CISP. Here's my, you know, I think I have nine for, for PNP and I bring those into those groups that I join. I just join like, um, I think it's uh, Blacks in, um, is it Black Geeks in Cloud? I can't remember the exact title because I'm on the spot, but I just joined that organization because I want to learn more about the cloud, right? Uh, so, and in it, somebody asked about CISP, like, because like, that just happens to be something they're interested in. So I brought that with me. But here you go, here's my top 10 uh, videos I watched, you know, materials I read, things of that nature. Just bring yourself to the group and any resources you collect along the way, bring those as well. And then you just make that group so much better. Great, fantastic. Well, uh, that's pretty much all the questions I had for you. Um, thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity to ask you these questions and uh, delve a little bit more into your background and uh, you know, what you're all about. And I think we talked about a lot of good stuff here. Hey, I, no, I appreciate it. Like, uh, I, I'm glad you reached out to me. Uh, I hope more people do as well. If you have anybody you wanna refer, uh, Send, send them my way and we'll try to make time to, to get them on the show as well. And even if they don't want to be on the show, they just want to ask a question. I, I'm always uh, here to answer what I can. I, I'm not going to have all the answers, uh, but that's why I have a network, you know? So if I can't answer the question, I will go find you an answer and bring it back to you. Um, so thank, thank you for your time, you know? Like, again, time is finite. So thank you for being on the show. Thank you for asking those questions. If you have any more questions in the future, I'd love to have you back on the show in the future. I haven't had any repeats yet. So we're trying to work those schedules out because people are busy, right? Um, but if I get you back on the show um, sometime this uh, this year, definitely have you back on, have your questions, see what you're pursuing, like where you're at in your journey uh, as well. And def definitely share this um, with your uh, your friends and family and whomever else. Like it definitely shot, shot, it highlights your passion as well as uh, your thought process, right? To future employers and people you may mentor in the future. But with that being said, I go ahead and land this plane. Uh, thank you for all those who, uh, who are listening or watching. Continue to, to support us. Um, watch watch the, the, uh, the Other Side of the Firewall podcast. Like again, Monday and Tuesday are our topics, Wednesday's discussion. Uh, this Thursday episodes are, are all about uh, talking to people who are trying to get into the space, have those questions. And then Friday, everything else, right? Like, what do we, what do we think about the latest Marvel flick? We'll talk about that. Because uh, you have to unwind people. Like you can't always be studying. Um, so sometimes you have to take time for yourself and your family um, as well. Um, hit up the website, www.theothersideofthefirewall.com to get to all of our social medias. You can hit me up personally. I'm at RyRy Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Twitter, and TikTok. And uh, you, Alex, where can people find you? 
Uh, mostly just on LinkedIn or Facebook, just Alex Worsham. Type it in, probably the first one there. All right. Spell your last name so everybody's tracking. Uh, Worsham, W O R S H A M. All right. There it is. Definitely link up with him, connect, follow, whatever uh, to support this, this, uh, this gentleman as well. He's on his journey. Uh, so if you're on your journey as well, or you, I've, you're at the, the, not the end of your journey, but you're further along, then, you know, you can look for mentorship as well. So definitely hit him up. Uh, with that being said, stay safe, stay secure.